still see. Then I have just kind of some basic cools, except for the burnt sienna. I have alizarin crimson, burnt umber, then burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and then I threw in some cobalt and cerulean blue. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna jump in. I'm starting out with a really thin wash of um, burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue. I already toned the canvas, um, just a nice soft uh, cad. I, did, I used some cadmium colors so that the light, if it shines through, has that already transparent color. Cadmiums make great, um, just the means of getting that nice transparent color. You'll see I'll use a lot of them today. Thanks for joining, guys. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to actually throw in a little bit of cad orange into, I, I say cad orange, it's actually cad yellow dark, but you know what I mean when I say cad orange. Okay. So I've put my canvas vertical to kind of lead the eye in. Normally, if I was going to do something this little, like those little oranges, I'd do it on a smaller canvas because it's just more charming. But um, for the sake of doing a video, you'll be able to see a little better. I'm doing it a little bigger. Okay, so here we go. I kind of have this little subtle thing going like this. I'm going to do them a little bit bigger than they are in real life too so you can see better. So I'm going to put, this is how I begin all my still lifes. Um, I hold my brush really, really loosely and I'm just trying to get a feel for where I'm going to put the different things. I am going to take this still life a little further than I did the first week that I did these videos because um, that was just a short one, kind of just showing how I sculpted out. This one I'm going to actually kind of try to finish, more or less. <laughs> so there's one little orange, and this guy is right here, and then I'm going to put this one right in here, because um, I think that will be, that'll really show up nicely. Um, at this point, I'm thinking about the distance from the edge that these things are going to Play compositionally, trying to make that as interesting as possible. Um, thanks for joining. <laughs> uh, let's see, so is everything working good? Okay, good. So, got my little orange here, and then I just threw in a few um, kind of scattered here and there to make it look a little interesting. I'll have some overlapping, some of them will cast shadows on others. Um, I thought that by just keeping my subject matter to one color, it would be a great uh, vehicle to talk about complementary colors and using those to help um, neutralize other areas. Got the little thing back there, and the bottom of the orange is here. This comes like this, and then I've got, this is going to be like this. And then this orange is going to come over here. I like how this sort of has that three-dimensional shape that way. It's kind of leaning. So there's that. <laughs> All right. So I think that this arrangement is feeling good on canvas. So now what I'm going to do next is jump in with shadow colors. And when I'm painting something as predominantly orange, I'm going to use its complement, which will be um, obviously blue. So I'm going to take um, ultramarine blue. I am going to keep some of those orange tones, yellow ochre. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Yellow ochre, um, the cad yellow dark. And then I'll incorporate a little alizarin and a little ultramarine blue. Can you see that a little bit? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Margo. <laughs> okay, so mapping out my shadows, I'm trying to connect them all. That's in the back of my mind always, how can I connect everything and create harmony? This middle orange here is connected to this back orange. In fact, the back orange doesn't have very much light, which I thought was very interesting, kind of evocative and um, in shadows. Thank you. Thanks for joining. All right. And um, keeping all this, your shadows should always be thinner, more transparent, 
and we're, when I get to the highlights, I'm going to paint them nice and with rich, juicy paint um, because you want your eye to stay in the lit areas and that impasto gives a lot of impact to the canvas and it says, look here, don't look here. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to, while I'm thinking about it, I'm taking ultramarine blue, um, hope you can see that, burnt umber, um, I grabbed a little yellow ochre, I'm just trying to get a shadow color for back there behind everything, just kind of a neutral gray brown. Hi Lily, thanks for joining. Um, I want to start establishing my boundaries, so... Uh, they kind of shoot back this way. I'm going to keep this all pretty quiet back here. My background is going to have um, sort of a predominance of blue to help pull out the oranges better. Um, just to keep that impact nice and strong. Uh, so, working this in. I can grab, you know, you can grab Cerulean. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yep, thank you. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'll just say thanks. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I'm grabbing some cobalt, cerulean, just different tones like this. And later on I can scumble um, sort of a bluish white, whatever, over that. Um, I'm not worried about going all the way to the edge yet. I don't even know that I would keep this painting this canvas size. Um, so I'm just kind of right now establishing a work area. You know, this is where these oranges are going to live in, this little zone here. And as I move around this side, I'm going to start incorporating a little more of the Naples yellow just to show that it's kind of more in the light as it wraps around. Around, thinking about the tabletop, letting my brush uh, show the direction of the oranges. I'm sorry, of the tabletop. I'm I'm painting and thinking, so I'm I'm all over the map. But <laughs> but I do enjoy um, painting still lifes. I think that they're probably I, I would never get tired of painting them. I there's always a challenge with it. And um, just when you think, oh, I'm kind of getting bored with that, you know, this, this, what else can you do? Find something. You have to find something else that challenges you. Um, somebody suggested painting a glass of water with ice cubes. I'll try it. It sounds like fun. Um, so never get stale. You never want to get stale in what you're doing. So I'm not really pulling too much information in here because what I see happening over there is it's like stained glass, those oranges are. So the light is shining through those glasses and reflecting, or excuse me, those oranges, and reflecting this orange glow on the tabletop that I love. And I'm gonna paint that in. Um, but for now, kinda like where that's going. Just that little bit there. Cleaning my brush off. All I have for my um, chemicals again are just the Gamsol, odorless mineral spirits. And then um, in a little bit, I'll start using my linseed oil. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so laying in some of this tabletop right in front. I usually work from the background forward after I've established where all my little characters are going to be, um, just to give myself a sense of placement. Um, so that's where my thoughts are going here. And you always want your brush strokes to show uh, direction. So in this case, if I'm painting a tabletop and it's horizontal, I'll use those kinds of the horizontal brush strokes. And I'm already going to grab some of this cadmium orange and just put it on the table just to give me sort of a, a place to put it. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to announce, because I'm super excited about this, next year, at this time, I'm going to be teaching a workshop in Tuscany. So, it gives you a year to think about it. Um, 
it will be great. It's going to be seven days from September 10th to the 17th, and I will be posting a lot more information on it. Um, but we're going to be doing portraits and still lifes and the Tuscan landscape. So stay tuned for all that information. All right. Now back to reality here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm kind of satisfied with the direction that my background's going. I'll obviously come back and tweak things and work around it a little bit more just to keep things soft and suggested. The background is always, um, you want it just to be quiet. You want it to support everything that's happening in the main area. So, uh, I mean, you could study backgrounds for years. That's one of my most favorite things to study. Um, Chardin was a master at backgrounds. He created air and atmosphere, and that's just something that if, if I had to copy any artist, I would love to just spend a day in his studio and watch what he does. Wonderful stuff. All right, so now um, I'm going to put in some of these powerful notes of color for now. I'm get in a new brush, one that's a little, doesn't have anything in it, and I'm squinting down at my still life over there, I'm sorry you can't see it, but I'll do the best. Tuscany, I know you should come, Allie. <laughs> Good, Joseph. You have a year, so no excuses. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing to get that clean, um, bright color is I've got a clean brush, and I'm just mixing. Thanks for joining, Linda. Uh, just mixing the, I'm going to just call it orange, because it's even though it's cadmium, yellow, dark, easier it looks orange on my palette so that's what I'm saying and I'm grabbing some of the cad this is cad yellow um, medium grabbing that too and just getting a nice little mixture of um, this color I think it might be too bright for back there so I'll hop over here and this little orange has a nice little hot spot of that bright bright color and right now I haven't done anything with the transparency um, so if you're just tuning in, I, obviously you can see I haven't, you haven't missed anything. Good morning. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> All right. So um, taking some of that cad red light. Cadmiums really are just wonderful for, tra for getting that um, beautiful transparent color. And right now, obviously, I'm just painting the orange skin, um, the skins of the oranges. So not really worried about transparency, uh, but you'll see how we get the um, transparent effect when I'm working on that. Keeping that loose. Okay. So, looking at the little orange that's kind of ripped in half, and I'm seeing all its inside there. You can take um, your Naples yellow and, um, oh. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thanks for joining. Okay. Um, Naples yellow and white will make something more um, opaque. So if you add some of that into it, it will feel less transparent. And also, when I get to the part where it's really, really, um, really glowing like stained glass, what you'll want to do is, um, oh, never mind. I'll just tell you when we get there. <laughs> It's so fun having you all with. I, I just feel like this is, it's almost like a classroom and it's so fun. <laughs> so I'm taking Naples yellow and maybe a little white to get some of that inner part of that orange going there just to give me a vertical to work with. And same with this little guy over here. And I've got a few spots where that's kind of a nice little hit of opacity. Um, when you're painting something that is as interesting as transparency or, um, you know, like when I do a, a, sorry if I missed your comments, my back is turned. <laughs> um, when you're doing something like transparency that you just have a little spot of just glowing, beautiful, uh, it, it'll have more impact if everything else around it is quieter. Uh, sometimes people say, Oh, I love color and and then they cover their whole canvas with just brilliant color and for whatever reason you kind of don't notice it anymore because it's all color um, 
What I love about artists like LaFell is they're very selective and he is a colorist even though most of his canvas is very dark and muted. The color that is there is just pow! And so when I work on these um, little transparent oranges, that's kind of what I'm thinking about is you use muted tones around an area and then that little spot of color will really sing. Um, it's like the one little diamond on a black velvet pillow. Uh, you notice it, it's brilliant, it's dazzling. But if you put a thousand diamonds on that pillow, then all of a sudden it doesn't have the impact. So to get impact and carrying power, you keep everything else quiet and then it'll pow right in the middle. Okay, so we'll get to that. Thank you, Edwin. Glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> all right, so back to work. Um, I hope that you can kind of see what I'm doing. I don't know, I, I'm trying this. So I'm squinting down at this orange here and not getting any white in um, or Naples yellow in what I'm doing. I'm keeping it really uh, just clean cadmiums. And then um, at the top, I will add a little bit of opacity just to keep it looking like those are shadows. And if I don't love the shape that I have going on here, I can always just paint background to reshape things. So here we go. I'm also going to take some alizarin crimson. Actually, it's alizarin permanent. No, it's not open. It's not over, Linda. It should open. You can always watch it afterwards, I guess, too. It'll, it just keeps replaying. <laughs> taken and putting some of that alizarin at the top and then down the sides and at the bottom down here. Um, I'm going to take some of that pure cad red medium, I hope you can see, sorry, and maybe a little cad yellow light. There's this nice glow down here under this orange and up the side a little bit. It's kind of start, it'll, it, it'll look more transparent when I add the opacity. Did you get it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Oops. So there's that. And on the front of this orange, it's a little bit, oops, not like that. I still don't like that. See how by, I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, if, no, you can't, well, maybe. Because I put this darker tone next to this area that I did just the clean, pure cadmium. Um, the, okay, oh, <laughs> I think I understand what you're saying in Italian. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I put this, this chalkier, there's a little bit of alizarin in it. Um, I put that next to really clean uh, cadmiums, and it, the cadmiums are starting to already look transparent. So that's how you have to do that to make that area look like it's glowing. And I'll do some more of that as we go along. What I love about oil painting is that you can reshape things that you have down just to make it fit and suit what you're doing. Mm. Yeah, I like that. So I'm also going to take, and this is just um, Naples yellow and white. I think there's a little bit of red in there. This is going to be just to help define this edge just a little. Um, I will often lay my pinky on the canvas to help balance. I don't usually use a mall stick. Um, I just usually have something in my other hand. Okay, so. And this one over here. Kind of a little bit more opaque. Um, I was talking in my class about taking your eyes out of focus. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Easy, correct, exactly. Um, when you squint, uh, you see things on a flatter, um, flatter plane. It takes out all the detail. So 
it's imperative that you're always squinting at what you're looking at, whether you're doing landscapes, portraits, still life, just squint way down. And you can also close your recessive eye and just almost even squint with your dominant eye. That um, by closing this, this is my recessive eye, by closing your recessive eye, you s just see it in a two-dimensional. And then if you squint down even further, it has simplified everything for you. So that's a great trick. So you probably can't see because my hair's in the way, but I'm doing that. <laughs> and and also, um, just taking my eyes out of focus too. You can kind of remember those um, prints that came out a few years ago. They were like computer generated, and you could just take your eyes out of focus and see the shape sort of emerge. That's the same thing. If you can still work those muscles in your eyes to kind of just take it out of focus a little bit, that's a nice little trick too. I'm using uh, alizarin with cad red to get this kind of, it's a glowing shadow over here on this cast, a little orange. And then um, I didn't like where I had this one drawn, so I'm just going to move it over. Sorry if I miss your comments. I hope I don't. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Okay. So. <laughs> I think I'm going to put on. Well, no, I won't. It's okay. So I'm still just using my different cadmiums here for this and um, working in some of these areas leading the eye in. I will be uh, using shadows and um, highlights to really draw the eye back in. Kind of just jumping around a little bit. <laughs> oh, thanks for joining. <laughs> and I'm going to use some oil just to help condition that a little bit and get it softer. And I love the way that the light is shining through this little orange over here. I, I leaned it like that just for that purpose, just so I could get some of that glow happening in there. And that is just um, pure cadmiums, red, yellow, um, yellow light, like that. <laughs> some smaller brushes going here. I want this to have a little bit more clarity in here because I love this little piece here. It's really important when you're setting up a still life to find those areas that you love. Where's the original? Oh, I missed that question. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Um, oh, do you want to see the original here? Yeah. I will move it back so you can see it. That's the, that's what I'm working on. Um, I showed it in the beginning. I, I wish I could zoom in. I'm not sure how to do that. So, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm crooked there. There we go. Okay. So, back to this. Um, here, I'll turn this so that you can see. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Okay, so here we go. Do you do this? I do this, um, Edwin, live on Fridays at noon Eastern time. This is my third week doing it, and um, no matter where I am, I'll try to do a little bit of something. Okay. And if you have any suggestions of things that you'd like to see, I, I'm all ears to hear different ideas and things like that. I'm kind of all over the map with different things that I work on and paint. And Thanks for joining, Susan. Um, so... If you have any questions or things or you know you'd like to see me do, I'd be happy to um, 
listen to that. I'm liking some of these. What I've done here with the um, outsides of the oranges. Um, oh, good. Thank you, Edwin. Um, what I've done with the outsides of the oranges, because when I look at the still life, the, the flat side of the little peel, the little um, pieces of oranges are transparent. And then the um, outer edge is more opaque because it has that white stuff on it. So I'm taking um, on my palette just some Naples yellow. I have some cad in there a little bit too because there are some little pieces of transparency peeking through. But overall, there's that nice little opacity going on. So I hope you can see this. I uh, just kind of took a swipe on the edge to show that's the side of it. Same with over here and up here. Um, and on this little guy over here, I like that. <laughs> and, okay. Having fun with this one. I hope you are too. This is really a fun still life to work on. I haven't really got into using too much of the complimentary blue in the shadows yet. Um, I kind of just mapped them out here to give us some shape and form, but I will be doing more of that. Thanks for joining, Gina. Okay, so moving forward. One of the things I'm thinking about too that I'm keeping in front of my mind is the flow of light, the flow of how I want everyone to look through the, the painting. Those are things you always have to bear in mind. Um, what is it I really want to say about this still life? Where do I want the eye to look? How do I, what do I have to do to make that happen? Uh, so since I'm kind of just using this as a demo, it doesn't, you know, I'm still thinking, well, you know, if I bring the eye this way and that way and lead out this way, then I think that that would be all right. Oh, good. Thank you, Andrew. I Honestly, I'm sure I don't make any sense when I'm talking while I'm painting, but I'm so sorry. So <laughs> I hope that you can kind of fill in the gaps if I start a sentence and then end it in some other sentence. So sorry. <laughs> I like how squatty these oranges are. Um, I think I'm gonna, sorry. <laughs> I'm reshaping this orange because I just wanted a different shape. So, oops, that's what I have going on here. I like a little bit lighter back on here anyway. So, just gonna sculpt out some of that, working it a little bit darker. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> There's Francis. So I like the direction that that's going in. Hi. Thanks for joining, Lori. Yeah, feeling good about that. Um, I always tell my students too, it's okay to, to be happy with different brush strokes or different things you do. Sometimes we get so discouraged and, you know, we're, we're so, I don't know, insecure about different choices we make and different things that we do. If you are fall in love with one brush stroke, love it, own it, and then move on and do another one. And that's, that's just, um, I don't want people to feel like, well, you know, it's a pride thing if they like what, I, no, love what you're doing. Love it. And if you don't, find out why. Hi, Lori. Um, hi, Corrine. Nice, nice of you to join. Uh, if you don't love your painting, especially not in the beginning, it's just going to get worse. So make sure that before you move on past the beginning that you really like how you have things laid out in your arrangement and your plan, your concept. You have to um, have that moment of, yes, I want to go forward. If you don't, just start over. No big deal. So, 
back to this. I'm just taking um, what I have, I don't know if you can see that mixture. It's um, yellow ochre, some blues, I think it was cobalt blue, and um, I think I had a little burnt umber in there. Just getting that kind of, it's kind of a neutral tone for the background over here. Uh, bringing that over to the edge, kind of up a little bit. I like to give my objects a sense of um, air and place and that they can just kind of breathe in this environment. Incorporate some of that air over here. Even though, you know, it, I'm still a ways, this is really rough. Um, it's kind of at that place now where I feel like, all right, they need to have some room. Or it's, I'm just not going to really know where I'm going or what I'm doing with it. So that feels better. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. And gonna, the closer I get to me, the viewer, the warmer I want to get my foreground. So, and the further back, the grayer or cooler, whatever you want to call it, the cooler the background. So, in this case, that's where that is going. And I, I most of the time, Naples Yellow is a cool tone, but um, if you mix it with the right uh, colors, it, it takes on a warmer tone. So, I'm using a little bit of Naples Yellow with with yellow ochre and some of this mixture over here that I had a little bit of white just to get this area in front of the the still life I don't know if you can see that I can show it again the the setup I'm gonna put some turpentine in there and let it just drizzle last week um had a lot of fun okay you don't have to Esther thank you uh, last week I had a lot of fun just splashing and drizzling whatever and that was really exciting and um, I like to play with different backgrounds and um, you know just different things like that every now and then that's fun like that okay so all right, now I can kind of go back and tighten up some of this here. I like this orange coming in. Using a little bit of that blue Take some of that. Kind of just refining the shapes of things a little. I think that's too heavy, so I'm going to add some yellow ochre. Just like this. <laughs> Thanks, Al. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, I think that that looks kind of all right there. And then a little bit on the top of this orange gives it that feeling of like it's going back. Gonna rework this shape here. Oh, thank you, Lily. So I'm just taking my brush here and just kind of um, <laughs> flicking it down a little bit there. That gives it kind of a nice soft feeling of roundness. Taking my background and reshaping some of these again like that. I find that oils are so forgiving this way. You can just reshape, rework, love that. Um, I do try to be very careful 
when I'm doing when I'm just working at my own um, I will be very very cautious and careful in just really isolating where everything's supposed to go um, demos are kind of a little bit faster um, especially when I'm going live <laughs> Yeah, that feels better. We have a little bit of air back there. Okay, so liking that. And then around this way. And you can see just how by taking your background tabletop color and things like that, it will just, um, you can rework and reshape things. I think that that's a wonderful little um, means of working without drawing your picture on your canvas first. You can just think about reshaping that way. I dropped my brush there. Now, again, I was talking earlier about those little spots of um, places where you can really just let that pretty paint sing, that transparency. And um, so now I kind of have a neutral thing going on here, a really calm, quiet, everything is just quietly doing its thing. Then I'm going to take and just really pop in some of that bright, um, brilliant, transparent colors. Cleaning my brush off really well. Folding over my paper towel so it's clean. And going straight into, um, can you see that? Cad yellow dark, or medium, I'm sorry. And then the cad yellow dark, or the orange as I've been calling it. And these little spots, I'm just going to go right there. Okay. Just a little, and you, and you can let these be nice, thick pieces of paint. Um, letting that define uh, the form. You want your brush work to always show, brush it in the direction that that object is going in. So like here on the side of this orange, I'm going to let some of these, I'm just going to take some Naples yellow along this right here, letting the brush trickle down the side, cleaning that a little bit. like that and that'll really help give that um, that membrane oh, <laughs> you like it thank you <laughs> um, the Naples yellow and white painted on a uh, area where it's supposed to be transparent has that membrane -y feel and that looks really cool in there so that's what I'm working on here and you can take um, and even cool it down even further by um, well, I'll just clean my brush. Taking white with a little bit of blue, a little bit, just to make like a chalky bluey uh, little mixture there for the membrane of the orange. Just a little bit. You don't want to overkill it. But that again is that opaque feeling with the transparent feeling. So it's a nice um, little balance there going. Having a lot of fun with this orange. Really enjoying that. <laughs> okay. 
things over here. Alright, um, I think in another video I'll, I'm going to talk about um, edges because edges are such a critical thing to painting um, anything. It's just edge control, the beauty of lost edges, um, finding edges, how to know which ones to lose, which ones to find. That's all just really important and um, in the life of, of your painting, it gives it so much vitality when you are able to select that way. Which ones to keep, which ones to let go. And everybody has sort of a different perspective of which edges to lose, but um, there are just some general guidelines to pulling out stronger ones, stronger edges. Just kind of refining these shapes again. Um, I do my best to get everything down fairly accurately in the beginning, but there's always that time that you're going to go back and fix your shapes and refine things. And then um, these things, you know, these oranges or anything you're painting, you want to um, keep it feeling fresh and alive. You don't want to overwork it because it can really feel um, kind of heavy and dead after a while. So trying to just keep that vitality is, is just really crucial. Um, getting a little oil because that's too stiff. And then over here to the edge, um, because these are round, I'm going to make sure that my edges are all soft on these. A round edge or a rounded item will have a soft edge. It'll show continuity. Um, but some of these little peels have um, a sharp edge. So I will paint those with um, like a cleaner sharp edge. So like right and this little guy right here, there's a nice white here, like that. And then he also has a little bit of a cast shadow on that orange back there, in which case I'm going to use that purple, that bluey purple again. Okay, so now, since I have that color on my brush, taking ultramarine blue, a little alizarin crimson, I'm going to go around and pop in some of these nice dark shadows, just to connect those all again. I call them anchors, uh, like this little orange down here now is anchored to the table with that nice sharp accent, it helps anchor the whole painting together. And also, and by doing that, giving those anchors, oh thanks Susan. Um, by doing those anchors, you will get that, again, more of that vibrancy. Oh, thank you, Corina. I'm glad that, uh, I hope you try it. Oils are so forgiving. I think you'll enjoy them. Shape this back here. Okay, over this way. And then over that way. So remember, I'm going to lay in some of that brilliant, um, I know you can't see it, but there's the light shining through the orange wedge, casting an orange glow on the surface of the table. And then my brush off. And that is just, I hope you can see it, I forget to lay my palette, or bring my palette up. I'm just taking some cad red um, and then the cad yellow and just laying that on the table there. That looks pretty. You don't want to do it too much, keeping it subtle, but it's there, so it's pretty, so let's see it. <laughs> Getting some of the 
this orange back here again. Let's find that shape. this kind of just connect back that way with the um, cadmiums in watercolors um, you know I can uh, my style of watercolor painting is a tighter more Victorian watercolor um, but I can do yeah I can show how to do those sure <laughs> This little guy back here, I'm just going to keep real quiet. Let him do his thing. Maybe just a little highlight, but that's it. This one. Not much. Oops. <laughs> I really do um, clean my brushes a lot. It's it's just important to do um, because it they can really build up and get kind of gunky. So if you want, you know, you need your colors to stay pure and clean. Uh, gotta clean them a lot. I just did this bright blue, and I really like that. So I'm gonna put a little of it back here, and maybe glaze this down the side. <laughs> I hope that that's showing up. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to soften this edge down here. Soften this. I might even just take some of that orangey glow and just kind of glaze a little bit of it into the background here to make it look like it's lit up. That's kind of fun. Without overworking it. Does that show up? Not really. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Need a new paper towel. Okay. Back to refining some of these. I do jump around a lot. In my painting because um, I try to work the whole thing at the same time if possible because it just has a greater sense of unity if you can move around and keep it um, keep it alive that way okay. always looking for ways to connect everything whether it's things in your painting here objects in the painting objects to the background to each other um, if if it was i would say if it was like a cow pasture if, you're, if all your lights were like a cow pasture and you could fence in just your lights would all your cows be able to go from one area to the next area or all your shadows if you could fence in all of your shadow areas would they um, would your cows be able to go throughout your whole painting that's a really great um, technique if you look at the old masters they really did a lot of that connecting their lights and their darks. Um, so that's kind of just different things that I'm thinking about here while I'm working. Is this connected? Um, is it balanced? What is my favorite um, medium? As far as medium to thin my oils, I use linseed oil. Um, I like Merge, I like other, you know, liquid, whatever, but I just find linseed is accessible and most of my paints are mixed with it, so it's just I, I just use it um, but if you mean like medium to paint in I like oils best okay. I hope that answers your question um, I'm gonna take if I squint down at that orange I see this really pretty clear um, piece of what I it's almost like glass over here on this orange so I'm gonna boom that right there Okay, 
Oh, did you, Joseph? Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad you did. That's awesome. I hope it helped. <laughs> Um, I'm using horizontal brush strokes on this orange right here because instead of going around, because if you go horizontally with your brush strokes, oh good, thank you, Crane. If you go horizontally with your brush strokes, it, it has more of a sculpted feel of skin going around the side of the orange. Whereas if you do this, it just kind of feels wedgy, like they're little wedges. I don't know. Does that make sense? I hope so. Right in this middle here where the membrane, that middle thing connects with the little peely thing. That's all technical jargon, by the way. You'll want to write that down. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this is called, but the middle thing connects with this. It's a nice soft edge right in the middle there, and that looks really pretty to get that just right like that. Very cool. <laughs> When, when you have an area that is your center of interest, it's like your star of the show. You want it to um, have the most juiciest paint, the richest color, the most vibrant of everything, the glowing light. It is your star, and everything else is the supporting actor. Um, so even though I like these other peels, if they're going to connect with that, then this one can be just as pretty. But <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Uh, it, but you have to you have to let everything else play second fiddle to that main star of the show. Um, and when I'm done with this, I'll post a picture up on Facebook of it completed because I know you're not able to see the different things that I'm doing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. Um, All right. I really like how this is connected right here. I think I'm gonna. Um, Take my brush off and put just a little zip right there. Uh, I like that. Okay. And then this guy I want him to be. I think I'm kind of pretty much done with this area. I really am happy with that little thing going on there. Maybe I'll pop in the stronger shadow in the background, like another little anchor back here, and that will make that look even more transparent by making this darker back here. See how that does that? I love it. I love, <laughs> I love playing with these things. And then I'm going to go real crazy and put the reflected light into the shadow because that looks really cool with this thick stained glass. I don't know if you can see that, but you'll see it when I share the picture. Okay, now I'm going to work on this guy. And this one, um, as I'm looking at it over there, the top of this orange is kind of almost the background color. So that'll be interesting to let that connect with the background. Keeping my brush strokes showing the form. Very important to do. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. And just like that. And I'm going to put some more of that blue back there in on the tabletop behind this orange. Just putting in some blue so that there's just a little bit of a difference, though, so that it looks like tabletop. Keeping my brush strokes again horizontal and I'll reshape this one right here. <laughs> so nice of you all to join me today. I, I, just, I feel so honored that you would sign on and watch.
Thank you, Sam. Good. Thank you. You'll see it when I show it up close. You, I really am happy with some of these things that are happening. And I, it's frustrating that I can't get the camera closer, but almost a position to use. I don't know what that is. It illumin. I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. This wasn't really re reading quite uh, like that. That looks better. If I make this darker here, then the one in front will get to sing a little bit louder. Does that, yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna add some shadows back here. Just a little, just a little right there to make this guy in front really sing, do its thing. I always say, in, in your painting, you are the director <laughs> of your own little show here. You're the magician. You're the one that has to pull off all the tricks to make it sing. And um, you're also the actor. You have to find the emotion in you and pull it out. Hmm. You know, that's all. <laughs> Anchor right there. Oh, I think I'll pull a little anchor in over here too. This guy needs something back here. I want this shadow that I'm working on right here to connect with this one. I feel that if this is connected to this, it'll connect to this, it'll connect to that and that and that. So instead of him just sitting out here like the lonely guy, um, I'll pull him in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a cast going down like that because he's kind of sitting on the edge. feeling like that. <laughs> Thank you, jo Jose. <laughs> oh, I missed his comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's precariously balanced. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> Um, it's not the place in the painting where I feel like everything's all the players are in place I really want to tighten it up and do some of the fun little details so oh good thank you Ray good do it <laughs> um, it's this this part is where uh, I just have a lot of fun with it because you can really just make everything sing and now I'm gonna connect things and do some scumbling and glazing so Stay tuned. This is the fun part for all of you who've been watching this whole time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so jumping in. Getting this membrane thing going here. It's fun. And this. Like that. So what I'm thinking here is how these um, outside membranes are um, 
these outside, y'all are having a conversation, that's funny. These outside membranes are connecting each other, and so I'm going to use that as the vehicle to have more of that connectivity. I'm also going to use it to help soften some of these edges that I want to kind of recede. Remember again, a soft edge will convey a feeling of roundness, and a sharp edge will be um, will show a sh sharp, like a flat cotton. It, it stops. So if you have an area that you need to have a nice sharp edge, like right here where I want that little peel right up against the table, I want a nice sharp, clean like that. The same with over here. I want to lead the eye in this way. So I want a nice sharp edge here. Especially since that little orange wedge has a nice sharp edge. That makes sense, right? So pulling that out a little bit more. And that helps direct the eye. Okay. Like that. And then um, pulling in some more of that transparent there. I want this peel, this orange, this this whole orange back here to look um, more opaque. Thank you. Thank you, Claud Claudio. <laughs> so I'm going to add just a white little highlight on it. I don't think it looks transparent, so that's good. I, I want that to stay looking, you know, like an unpeeled orange. I'm also going to take and um, do a little on top, the little, the little thing, whatever that is, up there. Clearly, I know the anatomy of an orange. <laughs> so that's just a little. I hit that with the highlight. Same with this guy back here. Yeah. I'm having fun. I hope that you are too. Just a few more things, and then I'm going to wrap up this demo. Um, I'm taking some gray, just a gray, and I'm going to go a little glaze under the orange there. And by doing that, again, because it's a neutral color, it makes the, the little bit of transparency I have there really sing. And then I'm going to keep this edge right here on this little wedge sharp to help direct the eye this way. So you're always telling the viewer where to look. And then um, I like this highlight here, or the bounce light on the back of this orange because it helps to bring the viewer back around. Always this cycle like this. Okay. So now I'm just kind of losing some edges here. I'm thinking about what needs to be done to call this a day? Just keeping things soft. Keep it nice and quiet. Oh, I guess I'm reshaping that orange. <laughs> it's okay because I, I kind of like it a little bit smaller like that. That looks neat. Maybe get a different, bigger brush. Now, um, in the beginning, I talked about scumbling some of this bluer over the background. So I'm going to do that a little bit here. Um, laying my brush on the side, just to kind of scumble a little bit of that, blending it in with some of that that I have there. Uh, really enjoying that. This is uh, one of the ways that I try to get atmosphere in my paintings. It's um, just keeping a hazy, uh, non object, non-glaring, sort of, it's just like, hmm, you feel it. Backgrounds should be felt more than um, observed, if that makes sense. You, you, a good background is one that you don't notice because all it's doing is supporting the stars. And in this case, it's these guys. Oops. I just noticed something. I'm going to take the top of this orange and 
soften that so that it goes back into shadow more. I like that better. Okay, so there's that. Keeping the background back there. Last week we had a lot of fun with backgrounds. I hope that you enjoyed that one from last week. I, it was fun to just cut loose and play. I think getting almost done. Now for a painting that's mostly, um, you know, the subject matter is just monochromatic, you can make it really colorful and um, just play up some of those. It's just, it's so much fun. And I do hope that you, you try little things like this and, um, you know, just play with it. Painting should be fun. We should be enjoying it. Gonna go in a little bit more highlights in here. And that should be about it. Yeah, good enough. All right, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, come back next Friday. I'm gonna do another little live demo and have some fun with it. Thanks again so much, bye-bye.